don't know, know she she is. Is. Episode 20. It's a party. And for a party, I may as well have some great people with me. I'm going to have the three homies from the band Cat Bite. Ska band Cat Bite. All the way from Philadelphia. And uh, we were supposed to do a bunch of stuff together before this COVID thing all started. And uh, so we figured we should hang out anyway. And uh, yeah, so... Hang on, you know, hang out for the ride. But um, don't forget, if you want to support this uh, channel, there's a virtual tip jar underneath. Anything, whether it's 25 cents, 50 cents, a dollar or more, uh, will make you a producer of the next episode. And uh, that's total uh, DIY style, right? Because uh, we don't put ads and stuff uh, on our shit. So, uh, yeah. Um, this episode was brought to you by Darren Drouin, who has uh, been following the show, I know, uh, since the get-go. I'd like to say thank you. The producer of the show is Darren Drouin. Much love. All right. Boom! Came and don't know she is. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? Yeah, you're, you're, you need to go the other way. A quarter, yeah. a quarter turn. There you are. There we go. All right, we're good. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Back down there we man. go. There you go. Can may maybe squeeze in there a little bit. There you are. There. You're all there. Hey, cheers, guys. Happy Saturday. Yo, Hello. cheers. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> what are you guys drinking? What is that? Truly. Uh, the Truly Lemonade. Hard seltzer. Lemonade. I like that stuff. <laughs> so how you been good how about you i've been all right yesterday i was uh, hanging out with vic from the slackers and uh he was telling me about this show coming up and then i just realized right after i think you guys are doing the same show yeah yes. we are <laughs> yeah that's uh tomorrow that's pretty cool uh, who else is on that show uh barstool preachers and pie tasters and okay. then uh boss Harmon dj boss harmony out of uh la oh wow yeah. finally something good is going on everybody's <laughs> been waiting forever right yeah it's i mean it's not a real show but it's it's, it's, it's gonna it it's, it's right gonna now. be cool as shit. yeah for sure well, right now, I mean, it's better than anything else going on. And in fact, that's one thing I want to talk to you guys about. Out of all the bands that I know, during COVID, you guys have to be one of the most active bands I've seen. <laughs> yeah, that uh, goes a large part to uh, these two uh, fine human beings uh, living together. And, you know, when everything first hit and, you know, the, uh, the shelter in place, you know, I uh, was there for about two months, luckily enough, because these guys were married, they were able to uh, kick out some content on a nightly basis, which I think really propelled us going forward in the initial stages of this. And then once that happened, we started getting creative with, all right, we want to do a couple covers, we want to do this, and then we were able to kind of individually track them in our houses and you know, edit them together. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's, it's one of the things that these guys living together and then us living close enough to each other that we were able to like put out some stuff on a consistent basis. Yeah. Helps. Yeah. It's super it also, cool because it I, I was thinking about, I was thinking about that. I mean, like the fact that, you know, often people will say, or maybe you've heard this or not, that, you know, couples and bands and it's kind of weird. This is one situation where it's the best thing you guys can actually get some shit done. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a blessing for their, and like it also helps that we're only a four piece as far as a ska band like yeah. you know it's and like we all just kind of know what we're doing as far as like recording and tracking and stuff and our our bass player ben who's not with us right now he's like he knows audio engineering and stuff so he's been able to like mix everything that we've done so like you know we'll, we'll just right. like record shit to a to a click send it to him I'll take care of all the all the video stuff and then he he takes care of all the audio stuff and then we just throw it together and content. well it's an interesting topic right now because like you know how kind of like the craze kind of happened and everybody started doing the multi-video you know covers and stuff on, on the internet what's your process for that because i've heard people doing it different ways like for instance when when, when i do it, i usually do something to a click track send it to my drummer he does it then i take off my original thing to play to the drums but what's your uh chain of events like pretty much that mm -hmm. yeah like 
I'll um we'll go ahead and I'll record guitar and she'll record vocals on top of just like a click track and then we'll send that to Chris and then Chris will lay down the drums and then yeah we just go over and we'll, we'll do bass next and then do guitar keys and vocals on top of everything and then um, yeah. yeah then he just mixes it up and yeah I think it's really cool because I think a lot of people really learned that you really have to play to the drums and this put it all in context that the drums really are the, you know, the, the foundation of this, because everybody's saying the same thing. You can't do something to a click track, but once the drums are on, you have to redo it after anyway, because you got to play to the drums. So it really nailed that cliche home, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And it, for me, it's, it's difficult because, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the songs that we were covering, we had never rehearsed. We had never, we, it was just, we're, all right, we're going, we, we're running with this idea and we're just going to go with it. But as the drummer, it was hard because, I would get these scratch tracks from Tim and Britt and it would just be guitar and vocals, no keys, no, but more importantly for me, there's no bass. So I'm sitting there like, man, I don't know what the fuck I should be playing. I don't know what the bass is playing. You know what? I trust Ben enough that I'm just going to lay down what I think I should be doing. And Ben will do exactly what he needs to to make it sound right. And yeah. thankfully it ended up working out that way. But yeah, there was like one cover in particular that like, because it wasn't very straightforward. And again, we, not having practiced, there was a lot of room for interpretation. So I was like, at one point said, to, uh, I called Tim up in the middle of tracking. I was like, I have no fucking idea what I should be playing right now. Uh, this could literally go in a million different directions. Um, and like the, the way that the, uh, the scratch guitar and the vocals were, it wasn't really like filling me in what I needed to be playing. So it took a couple tries before I was just like, okay, I think this is, the direction it needs to go into and then as soon as i heard the first thing back from ben i was like no he got it perfect all right we're good we're good yeah yeah well it's funny it's, it's so weird do, doing it that way because like a lot of people aren't together so they can't like you say rehearse these songs for us it was the endings because even if i'd send them a scratch track the drummer would be like but where exactly is the ending, you know what I mean? Or how do you want the ending? Because like say, there's no bass player playing with them. You're not all together. It's a weird thing. It really is. But you kind of just adapt and go with it, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and half of like, what made that sort of easy for us or how we were able to navigate that is like, I think almost all the times that we've gone into the studio, we've been, I don't want to say ill prepared, but we haven't been, we had none of the things that we've, none of the recordings that we've made when we went into the studio was everything fleshed out 100%. So we've just adapted to sort of to this sort of that always happens in the studio. yeah we've adapted to this mentality of like okay we're just gonna make it work <laughs> we're just gonna make it work no matter what like, uh, and it's same thing with like the um, covers we were doing in quarantine it's like okay I you know as the drummer I feel like this would be the natural ending so I'm gonna end it like this and then again just through us having done that and us being very familiar with each other and the chemistry we have in the band we're just able to make it happen like, all right this is how this is gonna end all right this yeah, it definitely helps that we've, we've all, like, I mean, the band's been around for two years, but, like, Chris and I, we've been playing together for, like, six... And Ben. At, well, and Ben, yeah. I've been, I've been playing with Ben in my old band for, like, eight years, and then me, Ben, and Chris have been playing together. Uh, we, we all played with Sammy K uh, for a yeah, long man, time. My, my brother. Hey, Sammy, if you're out there, cheers, brother. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, and then just like me and Brittany, like we've been playing stuff together for uh, you know four, five years. Um, so like we all just kind of like know each other's chemistry already, and like. And and also yeah. like, to to quote the uh, Philadelphia bas basketball motto, we just trust the process. Like, all right, we're just <laughs> we're just gonna we're gonna go into it, and I, even like yeah, even if it's not <laughs> even if it's not one hundred percent figured out. We, we just trust that what uh, the end result will be exactly what we I, sometimes sometimes exceeding what we were anticipating. Oh, so sure. yeah, yeah. And most mistakes usually are better than the original idea. I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. 
Man, it's so good to see you guys because what a lot of people don't realize that technically we were supposed to do a whole bunch of shows together. You know, we, we had just got our visas to go play in the United States. We ended up playing two shows down there and everything got shut down. We lost our visas, you know, and all that. So it's actually really good to see you guys right now. You know, it kind of gives us hope that one day we'll be able to connect again. I know. I can't wait to reschedule those dates. Like, yeah, we're we, still looking forward to that. I know. We had, we had the weekend that we were going to come up to Canada, and then we had, like, a couple dates we were going to do in the Midwest with Muscle Plug, and we were super stoked with them. And then everything shit the bed. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rain check. We'll, we'll, we'll make this happen in the future for sure. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. I just, you know, I, I'm an impatient motherfucker. <laughs> like, I hate <laughs> sitting around doing nothing. Like, really, man, I'm missing my boys right now, you know. That's why I, I've kind of been doing more and more of this these days, just to be able to hang out a little bit, you know. But, uh, yeah, man, have you guys, you guys have played in Canada before, though, right? Yes. Yeah, we, we yeah, the only time that we, Kappa has done it was uh, Puza uh last year back in 2019 um i played there with my old band snails a couple times and then uh with sammy k we did uh any of the bubs and then like us with sammy k we did uh uh right. for five years six years ago before. yeah we did a couple shows with slackers on the west coast in canada right on right on man like yeah. as far as touring goes, you you guys have a, as a band. You you said you're together for two years, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys are active as fuck for a band that's only been playing two years. <laughs> what you have two albums out, you got vinyl out, a shit ton of merch. You've already played two countries. The fuck, guys, slow down a bit. Other people <laughs> gotta have a job after this. Well, that that is largely due in part, and we couldn't give enough shout outs and enough respect, uh, uh, Mike. From Kill Winkin, Bad Time, he has definitely helped us do all of those things. Without him For sure. and without Kill Winkin and without the Bad Time family, we wouldn't have been able to do all that. So we're super fortunate and super thankful and grateful for everything that Mike and everybody from Bad Time has done for us. Uh, but yeah, that's really, while we would have wanted to do those things, he was really the mover and shaker to make that happen. And yeah. And also just like we, we you know we've been playing in bands for a while so we're like we we know how it goes like you know we've all been touring and like we we know what like when we started this band we're like we want this to be like we want to be ambitious as hell like yeah, we, we already knew we had like the goals already set so hey Brett, can you come a bit closer to the camera i can't hear you very well oh i'm sorry i was just saying we are we had like set in mind the goals that we wanted for this band to happen so we we just like we, we just like beeline for it yeah it's like we, we we're a band that wants to tour we want to like go all over the fucking world we want to like we're doing we're in it to win it you know this isn't just like a little you know side little side project or anything like you know this is the first time i've only been in one band in like seven years and it's like you know all of us just like our focus is this band well that's what it takes man it really does take that right because like anytime you know people realize that you're not throwing it all in you're gonna be do some cool shit yeah but if you really want to push and do it you guys are doing it right and that's what you know anybody out there listening has got to really truly believe because it, it, you know I, I get it a lot of people want to do a lot of different things spread themselves out or you know maybe play on weekends and stuff and you know talk about the cool shit but if you really want to drive man you know you guys got it right what, what would be your favorite place to go to oh europe i want to go to europe for that yeah europe would be dope we were actually we um we were in the in the works of uh we were gonna be in japan actually that's where I, that's where i want to go yeah so we we actually had a japan tour books Arigato. Uh, for this, <laughs> we're supposed yeah. to we were supposed to be there this september but um like COVID. covid obviously you know put a halt to that we we were probably about a month two months away from announcing it <laughs> when we had to pretty much just cancel it. So we didn't even get to announce that. We were gonna do like a, we we're gonna do five days on the West Coast and then fly, fly over to Tokyo and do um, a week out there. And then, um, you know, we, we just, you know. And then leave. COVID <laughs> came along, right? And then you're like, all right, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, no, I, I, I fortunately enough, I, uh, Tim and I went to Europe, and I would love to go to Europe. Scott's huge. It's still huge. I mean, all over the world. But I've never been, and I've always particularly been in Europe. Like my number one place. But I know that Scott's huge in Japan. I've never been there, so I would want to go there and. After that, either like I know Scott is also huge in Mexico or yeah. like South America, somewhere like that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. go hang out with the Lost Kung Fu monkeys down there and get crazy. Yeah. I love those guys. Shout out to Lost Kung Fu, right? Boom! Yeah, we're trying to party. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely. I can't wait till we can get together because we're gonna have some good times. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Are you guys are in Philadelphia right now, right? Yeah. You're in Philadelphia right now. Yeah. How's like Philadelphia actually correct for an American city? I mean, when I think of ska scenes and stuff, naturally I kind of lean over to Boston. They got stuff going on. New York has stuff going on. Then you have the West Coast style of like, you know, reggae, punk, and a, a bit of ska too, but it's usually like pretty hardcore and stuff. But now I'm learning that Philadelphia is starting to get a, a ska scene going on there, right? I mean, we went down and played there and had a blast. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not really many bands uh, that are playing ska here, but um, it's like we've definitely been having like great turnouts, uh, and there's definitely some bands starting to pop up. Um, yeah, like Philly's always been weird because there's just such a, it's such a huge music city of like everything, like literally every genre. There's like you know there's a huge punk, there's huge hardcore metal, metal like like literally everything. And so, which is uh, good and bad because, you know, there's just always so much good music going on. So it's like, you have to really bust your ass and promote the shit out of your show, which, and that's what we've always done. Like we, we don't play Philly a lot and that's been our goal. Like we've only played Philadelphia maybe four or five times since we've been a band, but because of doing that, like we've had great turnouts at every show and we've like, you know, give it our all as far as promotion. Yeah, and I think there's like a, and this could be said across the country, but particularly in Philly, you know, you know, maybe 10 years ago, Scott, I feel like fell off pretty much, you know, in a lot of places. But I feel like now in Philly, even though there's not that many bands, there are some here, but there's not like a, uh, a large number of bands playing it. I think what we're seeing now is there's a, a willingness to go to a Scott show. There's a willingness to like entertain the idea of going to a Scott show because it's a good time. Uh, whereas before, you know, people, are, I only go to hardcore shows or I only go to punk shows or I only go to this, that, or whatever. Um, where I think there, there's just more of an openness now to ska and ska JSM music, which a couple years ago wasn't, wasn't the case. Which, I, oh, yeah. I've, de I've definitely noticed the change myself too. Like, I mean, uh, a lot more people are at ska shows, but I also find like a lot of the new ska, like the image and vision of it seems to have changed a lot. You know how like back in the day you'd get like, you know, ska bands was like kid music and kind of a little, you know, wimpy on the sides mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. But these days I find like the ska, the ska bands coming out are sounding tough as fuck and real as shit. And it seems to have brought this new like credibility thing to it. And, you know, it's not too bubble gum, but yet fun still. But it seems to be a little harder these days, and I think people are loving it. Yeah. Hold on, there's a helicopter going over there. Don't tell me that's the cops, man. I'm not here. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think, like, there was, like, you know, I'm a couple years older than Brit and Tim, so there was definitely, like, a thing with people that I knew were my age that was, like, very much that stigma of, Oh yeah, I used to listen to ska in high school, and I think as younger people are then slowly, you know, uh, heading into their early mid late twenties, that sort of like oh I listened to ska when I was in high school is not really there so much anymore. So now there's this like newfoundedness of like, oh well, I actually didn't listen to this in high school. So what is this new thing that I haven't heard or haven't gone to this sort of show or don't really know this genre, which is helping everybody out. It's just helping all everybody like you know involved in the ska community out because it's. It's so cool! It's so cool that you say that. It's so cool that you say that because after a show, a guy came to see, see our band play, and right after he came up to me and said, "Man, I didn't even know I liked ska." Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is, it, it's totally changed. It, it's weird because a lot. Of, I think a lot of people got on that bandwagon of thinking one thing about ska, but then they got out, and all of a sudden the words out that no, no, it's tough as shit and it's fucking stomping. You know what I mean? And uh, so I definitely I, I found a switch in the last year and a half, two years there. 
I feel like a lot of people have like a sort of idea, even if they've never listened to Shah, they have this like idea and then they just like go, they just go with it without even having listened to it. But then if they end up at it, like, you know, at our show or at one of like these newer Shabian shows, they're like, oh shit, like this isn't what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, the biggest compliment that I, that I could ever got, I could ever have gotten, we could have ever have gotten, and it happens often is like, because, you know, Tim said it in a couple of different interviews, but it's the truth. Like, we love playing ska shows. We love playing with ska bands, but we also love playing shows that aren't ska shows. We love playing on a bill with a uh, punk band, uh, uh, an indie band, whatever. It's just not a complete ska bill. And every time we do that, and it's it's like check one for like the ska community, we always have somebody, and it's the biggest comment we could ever get is. I didn't even listen to Scott. I don't really like Scott, but I like you guys. Or I like this. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, now you're demonstrating something. They're openness. saying that to all the Scott bands. <laughs> it's the same guy. I know it. <laughs> We're on to his tricks. <laughs> but it's funny. I know what you're saying. One of my favorite tours that I did was with a band called The Brains out of Montreal as well. And they're all some of my best buddies and this kind of thing. And they're like hardcore psychobilly. I don't know if you know The Brains. but And we were a ska. You know, we're a rocking ska band, but it's still ska. And for some weird reason, there wasn't a situation where one crowd didn't want to go see the other band at all. In fact, we brought a Scott crowd, they brought a Psychobilly crowd, and they all wanted to be there for both bands. It was really weird. So, uh, you know, one of the conversations I had yesterday or the day before um, with Vic was, one inter interesting thing about ska is how we bring in these elements, you know, like ska is what it is, but the cool thing about it is you can always integrate whether, you know, it, it's another flavor, whether it's even country or, or, you know, you can always put all these different things inside the, the circle of ska. And that's what's so cool about it to give it all these different flavors, you know, but uh, it, it's not going anywhere. Anybody that says ska sucks or it's dead, they can eat my fucking, you know. <laughs> No, and that's what we saw this past year. Like, from the smallest little shows that we played to like the biggest shows we played, the people that are there are super stoked to be there. And it's like, I mean, we played, you know, again, a couple small clubs, but then this past uh, Thanksgiving, we played Thanksgiving in New Jersey. It was uh, Goldfinger, Suicide Machines, Big D, Plant Smashers, Us, Kill Lincoln, and this band, Backyard Superheroes from New Jersey. Sold out almost 2,000 people. Did you no hear the way. lineup you just mentioned? Of course it's sold yeah. out. <laughs> it's like there's no way you, you could say Scott's dead and then have 2,000 people come out for all these bands. It's just yeah. crazy. And like we were the second band of that night. And we and there, there was like 1,600 people there when we played. Yeah, so like, I want the people whole show. I love it. Yeah. So tell me, amphetamine delay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk to me. Talk and what you got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I didn't write the lyrics, so I'll let somebody else take over. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just, it's a song I wrote. Uh, it's a lot of, it's about a lot of things. Yeah. Well, that one's for the ups first. But yeah, I originally, well, I originally wrote it just like for myself. And then, like, then I was playing like in this punk band, or like, and I was like, hey, I have this song I wrote. And, like, and we started playing it. It was cool. but um, That was good. I dig it. I dig that. Yeah. But then like, it was right around the time when we were starting this band as well. And, we're like, and I'm like, I think it could be better. As a, I like re-recorded it as like a ska demo. I'm like, oh, this fucking rips. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, you know, we have fun. <laughs> you should Voodoo Glow Skulls ask George uh, about what he thinks about when I get on stage right along those lines like what you put a little powder on your head and just go crazy no matter what you know <laughs> <laughs> but no it, it's funny you know um, the whole concept of writing songs and taking a moment it's like the other day I wrote a love song I don't do that it's not something I ever did in my history but all of a sudden I felt the need to do it Two days later, we broke up, you know? And then yeah. sometimes they, people, all these bands that party and stuff are, are all like, you know, we're going to write these party things, but they went to rehab three days later too, you know what I mean? So everybody's playing these songs that, you know, that's the cool thing about it. It kind of, you know, it's just that one moment in time, I guess. But it, it's a funny thing, right? Oh, yeah. It, it serves as like a timestamp of like, like when and where, and what sort of mindset you were in when you wrote it. But, yeah. but, but yeah, I mean... 
that changes, you know, and, you know, it, very much like you're saying, you know, a, a lot of like, you know, punk bands or whatever bands write songs about, you know, whatever it is, whether it's partying or whatever. And then, you know, like very much like you're saying, end up in, you know, going to rehab and now are in recovery, but they can still sing those songs because it's still something that, that they went through. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, man, absolutely. Who does uh, most of the lyric writing for you guys? Um, I feel like it's it's like a half and half between Tim and I. Yeah, I do, I, do, mostly I her. do a lot of it. Yeah, I do a lot of it. But Tim, Tim also writes some of the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, and like sometimes I'll write like a chorus, and I'll be like, all right, "That's all I got. You you fill in the blanks." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, usually as far as, like, the inception of songs is usually, like, uh, either I'll write some music without, like, any, any vocals or anything. I'll just, like, I'll just, like, write a song based on, like, a riff, and I'll have, like, the whole arrangement, but, like, no, no idea as far as melody or, like, vocals, and then I'll just be like, here, put some stuff on top of this, and then she'll go and put some stuff on top of that, <laughs> or it'll be vice versa. She'll come with some lyrics, and I'll be like, all right, let me write some you guys are right. beautiful. You're like the Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart uh, of ska. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but yeah, that, that will, we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll just do that and we'll come up with like a real basic demo of just like guitar and vocals and then like garage band drums. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll just like use the, you know, program some drums and then I'll send it out to Chris and Ben and be like, this is, you know, a song that we're working on and then it'll be like super you know simple you know nothing crazy just kind of like showing a simple arrangement and the idea then, of it yeah and then then we just together like it all it always all comes together when once we're all together and we're like hashing shit out and like, like figuring we're like let's try this we do it maybe yeah. we don't like it we're like well what about this idea and then that's like when we're all together it's like when it becomes like a thing yeah Definitely. Am I right to to uh, believe that you guys have two albums out, right? We have so we have one album, and then we just put out a split, which has two songs, but they're both covers. And then uh, when we very first started, we recorded three demos, which was two covers and an original. So oh, okay, yeah, we, so one full one full length, and then two little guys. But we're we're actually going to be recording our second records coming up in September. Nice. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd like that's why I made the you know I was asking about amphetamine the delight because uh, I think we were driving back from the states last time and I th I threw it on and you know, and the guys were like man it's cool and can't wait to hang out you know but uh, <laughs> it will happen I'm still gonna get ya. Uh, yeah. Yes please. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you guys put on the party lights in the back. Yeah. Yeah we're you know we're we're out in our set the mood out in our back porch I guess it's getting a little dark so. <laughs> Gotta keep it lit. Yeah, keep it lit. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> what day is it today? It's Saturday, that's right. Um, Friday. You guys, pardon me? Friday. No, it's Saturday. Literal TV. Right? No, it's Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. No, it's Saturday. Yeah. Oh, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, it's Saturday. It's always um, Saturday. <laughs> you guys are Bad Time Records. And you were talking about uh, Kill Lincoln and the help that they're doing. When did you guys hook up with them? Has it been a while or is this a brand new, uh, you know, like another step for you guys? Um, so I've, I've known Mike and Kill Lincoln for maybe like six or seven, eight years. Uh, my old band, The Snails, we were uh, real tight with them and played a bunch of shows over the years because, you know, they were originally from like D.C., and then we're, we were from Philly and we, you know, played a bunch of shows and got like to know Mike. Uh, we actually played at his like wedding after party, which is awesome. And then, um, so we record, like we started the band and we just like put out those three demos and like almost exactly two years ago. And right when we did, uh, we were like kind of in the talks, like as the band were like, you know, what should, what should we do? Should we, just like try and write an EP and then like, you know, shop it out. We were just like, we had no idea what we were going to do as far as like starting. And then like a day after we had that conversation, Mike hit me up. He's like, Hey man. So I just, I saw, I absolutely love what you're doing with this new band Catbite. 
let me just fill you in. I'm actually in the process of starting this new brand, brand new la uh, record label. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. He's like, yeah, we're going to be putting out uh, We're the Union and then uh, re putting uh, Kill Lincoln on vinyl. And I would love to have you guys, you know, put out or, uh, put out an EP with my new label. And then we just, that kind of just kept getting delayed until it got to the point where like, hey, do you want to just do a full length? And then, yeah, we were we were the third band, third release for um for Bad Time Records, and ever since then it's just it's just been like helping us out so much. Like he's such a knowledgeable dude. Like he's been playing forever. He's such a great dude. He knows what he's doing. He's kind of like he mo he like right off the bat he's told me he's modeling this record label based on like Asian Man Records, like just like super DIY, but like focused on like the band. It's not a money grab. It's like putting bands out and then like helping them grow. I was like, Oh, this is cool. It's amazing. I, yeah. Like, I, you know, I didn't really expect it to be him to be this amazing, but like, just like the whole step of the way, like anything we like need help with, I like hit up Mike and he's just like always got great ideas and we're just like bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, and then, I mean, the label has just, just grown so much in the past two years. But yeah, that's it. I think really like a band, like in your situation where you've already had some experience, you've played in bands before and you know that you want to give it your all and start working right away and stuff. I think in those types of situations, I mean, it really does take a bit of a team and, and a push because like, if not, you know, people get burnt out. If you're doing all the booking, if you're doing all the song, if you're doing it all, you start getting burnt out. I've seen that so many times with bands. I've been guilty of it myself as well. And uh, you know, but, to be able to pass some stuff stuff off, you know, and accept the help, it just lets you guys work so much more. And I, so I think you guys are doing it totally right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I, yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's just like the perfect balance between what we're doing as a band and with his help. And then just everyone else, like all the other bands, like associated with that time and just like in the scene, like you guys and like, you know, uh, Jeremy from Scott Tune Network, they've been a huge help for us, like, you know, using their platform to, like, just, like, push our name, and, like, it, it's just, like, a really cool, it's just, like, perfect timing, I think, like, all these bands kind of popping up at once, and, like, kind of, or not even just popping up, but, like, everyone's kind of getting real serious about it, and, like, really about, super supportive, yeah, yeah, super, it's, super supportive. It, 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 it's, like, to me, like, when I got into like the into like punk and like the punk community, it's the definition of what the reason you got into it. It's there, and then this is like a weird thing coming from Philly because Philly, like a lot of times, there is you know ego trips and oh like oh, we support this or we don't support this or whatever. Like with Bad Time and all the people affiliated with that, it's such a sense of like what we're doing is rad, what our friends are doing is rad. Mm -hmm. Let's be rad together and let let's help everybody else out and once you have that, it just, it just starts snowballing and everybody's just super stoked to help their friends out and then also put out music and do stuff themselves yeah. that it just permeates through everything. It's just yeah. such a huge, huge sense of like friendship and community and support without any ego, without any sort of like, ew, I don't listen to this or I don't like this. That's, I mean, like I've seen that over the years and it's so refreshing to be a part of something where there's none of that. Everybody's just stoked essentially everybody's just stoked to see what their friends are doing and help them out right and it's amazing to see if, if if every city had this going on because you know when you're touring around you hit the cities you can tell where they're helping each other out because that's what starts a scene you know if every city had a scene all these bands would be touring and entering each other's scene and passing it back and forth. So basically anybody out there, you got to listen to these guys. They know what it is. <laughs> you know, that's why I love being in Montreal and all this and Montreal, Boston, New York, you know, now Philadelphia, there's all these great places to play Scott, but it takes people to make this shit happen. You know what I mean? Oh, and it, yeah. it's fucking awesome. So fucking hats to you guys. So uh, tell me what's uh, what's the plan for the new album? Uh, so, like I said, we were going to be going to Japan uh, in September, and we had already booked flights to LA, and uh, we didn't we didn't get the Japan tickets yet. But so the, the tour got canceled, but we still had tickets to LA. So we're just, and there's this producer friend of ours, um, Davey Warsup, 
who lives out in Long Long Beach, and uh, he he really wants to work with us, and we really want to work with him. And we just we're like, fuck it. Do you want to just keep those flights and just go out there for two weeks and do our second record? Um, we were already like kind of in the talks of of trying to record our second record at like the end of this year, so it it just kind of all fell into place. Um, and it kind of gave us a nice little deadline to like really start writing these songs and not get lazy. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go out to Long Beach, record with him, new full length. Be sick. Hell yeah, man! I can't wait for that. Like, I really, you know, hopefully the timing will be, you know, just perfect and not too close to when COVID ends, because I have a feeling that every band is gonna launch an album the day the green light goes, and every band's gonna want to book that first day, right? Yeah. It's gonna be yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, it's it's just so weird without like a definite timeline on all this, but like we just kind of feel like you know two years after our inception. Yeah, two and a half years after our inception of a band, put out this record like two years after our first record, and you know, just it, it just it'll just show like our progression as a band. Like, you know, we've grown a shit ton since we've recorded our first record, and like we've really found our sound. Um, and we've just been writing like crazy. We, you know, we have all these brand new songs. Uh, and it's just, it's just it's gonna be cool. Yeah, that's we're, awesome. We're Are you gonna release it on vinyl? Like you did, you did your uh, last album. I saw it, it, you guys made it on vinyl, which I'm really happy about. You gotta send me one of those, by the way. And oh, yeah, um, yeah. Like, what, 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 what was your reason for doing the vinyl? Like, do you guys listen to a lot of vinyl and that kind of thing? Or, well, yeah, I feel like, like, yeah, we didn't even do CDs at all. I, like, we just did vinyl and digital. That's the way to go. Like. People want something to hold, but they don't want a CD to hold. They want the physical music to hold, and like, yeah, that that's like the bad time. The bad time way is, like, whatever Mike releases, whatever bad time releases, is on vinyl. Um, so when we were presented with this idea again, right after he started the label of like, hey, he wants to put out our first record, but the labels, you know, their idea is to only put stuff out on vinyl. We're like, hey, that's fine by us because yes, we all have vinyl. We all have a vinyl collection. But also just in this day and age, like everything is online. Everything like you can find everything anywhere. But like what people want to take away with them is a vinyl. So it just made sense to us that like uh, Mike is going to help us put out our first release on vinyl. But also, you know, all the streaming platforms, you can still get it. But yeah, to take home something to take with you or have shipped to you at this point. Absolutely. Um, I'm so happy about it. Like, I'm so happy because like. Not, it's not a knock on CDs. I mean, I you know there was a point where they're really handy in your car and stuff like that. But like this, when it comes to vinyl, the weird thing is like I lived the crossfade when you'd barely sell any vinyl, sell a ton of CDs, and then it slowly just kind of shifted the other way, right? But yeah. it's fun. I mean, people buy vinyls. They always want everybody to sign them. There's something to look at, something tangible, something they can trip out at at home, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, amphetamines or weed. But, uh, you know, and they can get <laughs> in, into the album. Uh, I can't judge anybody, man. <laughs> it's yeah, fucking awesome. Sure. Hey, listen, guys. I need to go get myself a drink, go load up the pipe and all this. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to have you know, been able to hang out for real, even if it was, uh, you know, this way. It's what we can do for now. But soon enough, soon enough, we're going to do it. And I'm going to want to bust out of here real soon. Even if it's not for a show, I'll probably just come knock on your door. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll yeah, do it. Ball or something. Absolutely. All right, man. Don't, don't change, guys. Love you big time. Thank See you, you so soon. much for having us. Thank you. Peace out, right, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Boom! 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 Boom!